Welcome to another episode of the photo department and a new episode of my series open studio. I haven't done one of these in a little while and I really wanted to get back into it. I thought they were really fun, especially the Q and a section. I wanted to do something a little more casual for this one. As you can see, tis the season hanging out in my living room, drinking some coffee. What I'm drinking today is some coffee that I got from my friends at Sleepwalk. It's a single origin Guatemalan coffee that is really, really good. Um, if you're a fan of coffee and really great handcrafted goods and the band Thrice, uh, you should check out Sleepwalk, not just for their coffee, but for their handmade goods as well. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today is kind of what everyone's talking about at least for the last two days, and that is the Harmon Phoenix leak. Uh, if you're not aware, Harmon, the parent company of Ilford, is coming out with a new film on December 1st. Ilford is a heritage brand that makes a ton of black and white films and film chemistry and other black and white photography products. But Ilford and Harmon have been teasing since about early November that they are going to be coming out with something new in the beginning of December. Most people guessed that it would be a film of some sort. Some people even guessed that it might be a color film, but this was all unsubstantiated until two days ago when some anonymous person on Reddit in the analog circle jerk forum of all places, a photo of their hand holding a box of the Harmon Phoenix film. On the front of the box, it says prominently ISO 200 color film. So right away we know we're getting a 35 millimeter 200 ISO color film from Ilford, which is really exciting. Ahead of the launch of this film, a bunch of influencers and film photographers on YouTube and Instagram have been teasing uh, that something's coming, kind of like this grassroots marketing campaign. Uh, obviously, a bunch of these people were given um, pre-production or at least preview samples of this film so they could shoot it, uh, give their feedback, and then have uh, content to drop on the day that the film is announced. Unfortunately, one of those influencers thought it would be a good idea to uh, leak the film about five days before it was supposed to be announced, which is, it sucks. I'll say it right now, it sucks because the film community is uniquely in a position where we have kind of this strengthening relationship with people uh, and companies who are creating film. And Ilford did this really cool thing where they uh, gave influencers and photographers a first person kind of like preview look at what they're doing in order to kind of like garner uh, some hype around the new product coming out. But it also allows uh, more of a community kind of driven marketing rather than like marketing from like some corporate entity. It allowed some people, some photographers, a chance to see and use this film before it came out uh, to better inform and kind of like show the community like what's going on in the film world. And it really sucks that this kind of shows that film influencers can't really be trusted with this stuff. Having it leak five days, I think actually I think like seven days uh, before it's supposed to come out is just not great. It doesn't look good for us. Um, it's probably a big bummer over at Ilford. They probably have a lot of money tied into this marketing. It's just disappointing that someone who thinks of themselves as part of our community uh, decided to kind of like betray the trust of Ilford in this instance. And uh, for what? I don't know, because uh, they did it anonymously. So I guess, I guess it's not for clout. I don't know. It's kind of gross. It, it sucks because, you know, Maybe Harmon, Ilford, Kodak, Lomo, maybe they're all gonna think twice uh, next time they have something cool coming out. Maybe they're not going to want to be so quick to kind of like release it out um, to photographers and other people beforehand because they're worried it's gonna get leaked like this. So whoever did this, stupid, it just sucks. Uh, but beyond that, here's what we know. It's a 200 speed color film so far. It seems like it's just going to be 35 millimeter. This looks to be like a first kind of stepping stone into that world for Harmon uh, and Ilford. So I'm really curious to see, you know, when this film comes out and people start using it, what that's going to mean for 
uh, film stocks in the future from Ilford. From the insert box, we can glean that this film is a uh, limited edition, so it's not gonna be around forever apparently. And it says, we're very proud of what we have achieved with this film, but it's also our first step into the world of color. Sales from this film will allow us to further invest, refine and improve our formulations, coding capabilities and color technology. So what it looks like they're doing is they're kind of dipping their toe in the water with C41 emulsions, seeing how this does, uh, using the proceeds from uh, this film, this limited edition film, to bolster their capabilities in, you know, actually coding C41 film. And then that's probably going to inform how they go forward as far as if they're going to come out with new C41 emulsions or if they're going to continue doing C41 at all, uh, which is very cool. I think that this is interesting to see um, a company be so candid, basically saying, like, we don't know uh exactly what's going to happen but we're trying this and this is going to inform what we're doing uh next which is very cool personally i'm really excited about this film because ilford has uh a sterling reputation as far as quality um, of their film products i've been using ilford hp5 since i was 14. recently after they came out with their kent mirror line of films which is uh their more affordable line of black and white films i was really impressed with how those films performed and I use them still all the time. So if their previous efforts are any indication of how good or quality this film is going to be, I think we are going to be very, very lucky to have another option for C41 film. I'm interested to see how much it costs. I'm interested to see how much film gets produced and how much is available. I'm really interested to see how it looks. So yeah, that's kind of that. Long story short, the leak is unfortunate, doesn't look good for the community, makes us look bad, makes us look like we can't really be trusted with uh, sensitive stuff like this. As far as the fact that we're getting another color film from Harmon slash Ilford, uh, I couldn't be more excited. I'm really, really stoked to see what this film is gonna be like, and I can't wait to get my hands on some and try it out for myself. If you haven't seen my Open Studio series before from last year, uh, what I'll usually do is a couple of days before filming, I will put out a, um, a story on my Instagram, basically asking people if they have any questions that they want me to answer in the video. And I got a bunch. So I'm gonna just go through them here. Uh, some of these are good, some of these are terrible, but uh, they're all gonna be fun. Uh, favorite way to shoot black and white film. What filters or stock do you push slash pull, etc.? I'm a big fan of Ilford films, as I have just been uh, talking about. Uh, I shoot a fair bit of HP5 and FP4. When I first started my YouTube channel and I first uh, was getting into like Matt Day and stuff, I was also shooting HP5 at 1600. I still do that fairly often. Um, I've expanded quite a bit. I really, really like the Kent Mirror line of films. They're super affordable, readily available, and just as good as Ilford films like HP5 and FP4, in my opinion. Um, I was a huge fan of Fuji Acros. Um, but now there's just Acros 2, which is also made by Ilford. It's a little more expensive, so I don't really buy that film all that much. And then lately I've had a lot of expired black and white film uh, that's been given to me or I purchased uh, a bunch of Tri-X um, and T-Max. And I've really been enjoying shooting T-Max. T-Max typically, um, most of the stuff I have is expired. And if it's not expired, it's uh, 400. So I'm shooting usually box speed. Uh, HP5, sometimes I'll shoot box speed, sometimes I'll push to 1600, depending on um, what I'm doing with it. Next question, have you ever considered doing photo slash video things on Twitch? I've been messing with streaming and editing. I have been interested in doing stuff on Twitch, but I think the thing that's keeping me from doing it is I don't really know what I would do. And I don't know if people really want to see me just like yapping on Twitch for like two hours about nothing, about film or photography um if there was an audience for that i'd certainly like to explore it It seems fun but um i don't really have the setup for that so i don't know i think maybe in the future that's something i might look into but i haven't done it yet i've been thinking about it are your glasses prescription or do you just wear them to look smart unfortunately they are prescription glasses um i don't think they make me look smart um sometimes i think i look better without glasses um but they're kind of like a part of my face now. Like I always have to be wearing glasses. Um, otherwise I feel like I look weird. Uh, who does your hair? <laughs> uh, my girlfriend is the only person allowed to do my hair. 
what is your regular daily setup for walking around town? That's a good question. Often I'll just have something loaded up in my Olympus XA, which is like my favorite kind of like walking around camera. Uh, but recently I've been trying to kind of push myself a little bit more creatively. So spoiler alert, there's a couple of digi cams I've been using, um, which I've been kind of figuring out what that's like and if I enjoy that or, or, you know, what is possible with those. So I've been doing that a lot. Um, Sometimes I'll bring my Mamiya C330 out, which is like not always practical, but uh, sometimes I just really want to shoot medium format and I have some idea, so I'll do that. The Fuji XE1 or the XE3, uh, just for some really good quick snaps around town. It just really depends on kind of my mood. So there's not really any specific setup that I usually have. I would say that my default though is my Olympus XA. Let's see, would you rather revive a dead film or cap the cost of current film at $10 a roll? That is a good question. You know, knowing how businesses kind of operate uh, and like what things cost, I'd have to say, I think I would probably go with reviving a dead film um, over capping uh, film costs because I feel comfortable paying more for film if I know that like it's helping the economy of film um, if I capped all film at $10 a roll, I think all these film companies will stop making film. Um, but if I were to revive a dead film, I'm not sure what I would say. My first instinct is Fuji Natura 1600, but there are a lot of other films that I really like, like the different types of portraits, like portrait NC, VC, UC, like all those different portraits. It was cool having those different varieties. Um, the original Fuji Acros would be really cool. Fuji Neopan 1600, Neopan 400. I know Jason would say Aerochrome, but I've said this before in a video. I think Aerochrome is such a niche thing. I think people like the romance of it. I think people like it because Jason likes it. This is not a dig at Jason or Jason's viewers. I'm a viewer, obviously. But I think that it's got this hype around it. I think most people would shoot it like two or three times and then be like, that was cool and then move on. Because if everything was Aerochrome, it would just, everything would, it would just, it would just be like a lot of bad aerochrome photos and like some good aerochrome photos. And then like, what would you use it for? It's just such a useless film unless it's like very specific. So, huh, God, I don't know what film. I'm going to say Fuji Natura 1600 just because like we don't have a film that fast in color anymore. And that film was very special. I have two roles. Uh, in my freezer that I've been just like hanging on to that I need to shoot something, but I'm scared to. Oh, you know what? No, uh, I do love Fuji Natura 1600, but that was kind of a niche film too. I, I wouldn't use it all the time. I would revive Fuji's Industrial 400, uh, Fuji Color Industrial 400. That film uh, was like the best general purpose 35 millimeter film ever. It was, it was so good. The reds were perfect. The greens were perfect. It was just such a beautiful film. It was very like, it was very good for everything and it's just gone. And it's very sad. I have two rolls of that also in the freezer that I'm holding on to. Good question. Let's see. Is that a Mamiya RB67 in your hands there? I think they're referring to my channel avatar, uh, which I recently changed back. I did have it as like the logo. But I'm tired, I don't like logos. I think logos are lame. I wanna have my persona, my face associated with this channel because this channel, it's me. It's not a brand, it's me. Um, and yeah, that is a Mimia RB67. Uh, embarrassingly, so I've owned like 12 or 13 RB67s in my life, uh, just from buying and selling them often two at a time. But uh, recently I got rid of my last one. Um, I just wasn't using it as much. And I was kind of hard up for cash, and so I sold it, and I regret it. I'm always going to regret selling an RB67. Yeah, that is an RB67. Unfortunately, it is no longer with us, or with me. But uh, it's one of my favorite cameras. So, yeah. Are your shoes Japanese? Um, I don't know what shoes you're talking about, but... Uh, these shoes I'm wearing right now in the house, these are deer foams. And some of you might recognize these. Um, they're from Costco. I needed house slippers. And so I got these a couple days ago at Costco and they're very, they're very comfortable. Um, I only wear these indoors and my feet are very, very comfy and very warm. And I think these are not, these are probably not made in Japan. 
Uh, last question. Assuming film stocks and developing scanning aside, which camera for the apocalypse? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, if we're talking apocalypse, you know, one camera to kind of do it all, like to document and to just keep working, it's gonna be the F2. It's gonna be the F2, baby. It's gonna be the F2. Uh, just because it's a brick, it's bulletproof, literally. Uh, it always just works. There's never any issues with it. It's built uh, to an incredible standard. Um, and it looks cool. And I really like Nikon glass of that era. So I think it's gonna go with the F2. With special recognition, second place, I guess I would say, would be the Rolleiflex, um, right there. Or the C330, those, those two. One of those, either of them. Maybe the Rolly Flip, maybe the C330. Simply because those are very uh, rugged as well and they travel super well and medium format is nice. I lean towards the C330 because the Mamiya stuff, as people know, are crazy rugged and you can, it's hard to kill them. It's a little bit bigger than the um, Rolly Flex though. So if weight wasn't a huge problem um, and size, I'd probably go with the C330 as an honorable mention, but yeah, I think, I think in an apocalypse, if I had one camera and I had to choose, if I had like five seconds to choose, it would be the Nikon F2. I'd probably do the 50 millimeter and the 105 and the 28 that I'm filming with right now. All right, yeah, that's it for me for this episode of Open Studio. I love doing this. I'm gonna keep doing these. I'm gonna try to keep this relatively consistent. I have a really good time doing these, so make sure you keep an eye out on my Instagram, at cmsturm, uh, where I will be putting up my uh, questions every week before I do a video. So uh, if you wanna send me a question, keep an eye out on my stories. If you come up with a question for a video, you just DM me. And you just DM me. I'll put the questionnaire up thing officially, but if you have a question that you want in a video, you can just DM me that question. Yeah, make sure you check out the Spooky Park Bench podcast. Mike, my co-host, best friend in the whole world, was visiting here from the UK a couple weeks ago. Uh, we did an in-person video. Uh, you can watch that uh, right, up, right up here. We did an in-person podcast. Uh, you can listen to that at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other places. Uh, you can watch the full video of that appear. Make sure you check that podcast out, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts because we don't have a rating. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Uh, I hope you're having a great holiday season so far, and I'll see you, fingers crossed, in a week. Bye.